Hello, I'm Matt Mockamer, Associate Cantor at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. In our last podcast, uh, Cantor Kevin Hildebrand was talking with you all about some ideas for singing the Alleluia, especially during the season of Easter. Today, I'd like to talk to you briefly um, about an idea that could be useful on Pentecost and even Holy Trinity Sunday. Unlike other seasons of the church year, such as Lent or Easter, the day of Pentecost is just that. It's really just one day. There's a common misconception out there that Pentecost is a season, but that's actually not the case. It's really a day. Um, the Sundays that follow the day of Pentecost are often referred to as Sundays after Pentecost, or in some cases, Sundays after Trinity. Um, so you can keep that in your back pocket. Uh, it's something that has been confusing to me for a while too. So, um, so we're talking specifically about the day of Pentecost as well as the following Sunday, Holy Trinity. Um, because Pentecost is simply one day in the church year, the music of Pentecost, particularly the hymns of Pentecost, might be somewhat unfamiliar to folks in your parish. Um, for example, if you're learning a new Easter hymn, you have seven weeks in Easter in which to teach that to your people and to repeat it so they can get familiar with it. Um, that's really not the case on the day of Pentecost. At best, maybe you get two weeks on some of these hymns, but that's really not a lot of time to get your folks familiar with a new text or a new tune. Um, so with that said, today I'd like to focus on one Pentecost hymn in particular, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed, and offer some simple ideas about how to utilize this hymn in your churches as we start to plan for the, um, the Pentecost time of the year and the Sundays that follow. Come Holy Ghost is really represented by two different melodies in the Lutheran service book. Um, you can see these next to each other at LSB 498 and 499. Both tunes are given with the exact same text. Let's begin by taking a look at LSB 498. This hymn was written by Rabanus Morris in the Middle Ages. The text was. However, the melody of the hymn was composed during the Reformation era so that the text could be more easily sung by congregations who were really just starting to sing hymns regularly for the first time. Notice how the rhythm of the tune is steady, how the note values are very even to help facilitate a large group of people singing this, this tune. Let me sing the first two phrases to illustrate that for you. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and make our hearts your place of rest. You can hear again just the very e even, predictable rhythm of that melody. If this is a new hymn for your congregation, completely new, I would suggest starting with LSB 498 and not worrying about what's on 499. Do some singing in alternation with a choir or a soloist. So for example, have your soloist, have your choir sing stanzas 1, 3, and 5 of hymn 498 in unison. Have your congregation respond back to them by singing stanzas 2, 4, 6, and 7 in response. This type of rote teaching can be very, very effective. It gives your your congregation the opportunity to hear the tune once modeled by their choir or by a good capable singer and then to respond back. And so we kind of go back and forth doing that with the choir again singing 1, 3, and 5 and the congregation singing 2, 4, 6, and 7. If you have a good capable um, instrumentalist in your congregation, consider ut utilizing them as well on the congregation stanzas just to double that melody and to give even a little more support for the folks as they are working their way through that tune for the first few times. If your congregation is familiar with the hymn at 498, consider utilizing that hymn with the setting found at 499. The melody provided at LSB 499 is the original chant melody that would have been used when Rabanus Morris penned the text in the ninth century. Listen to how it differs from the setting of 498. 
Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and make our hearts your place of rest. And it continues on in that way for the remainder of the hymn. You'll probably notice that the melody sounds pretty similar to what's on 498, except it's a little more free, it's unmetered, so it doesn't have a regular beat, um, and as is pretty common with plain chant, there'll be many syllables that have numerous notes on one syllable. All of these factors make it a very lovely melody, but a little more challenging for the typical congregation to sing well. Um, so again, let's visit the idea of singing the hymn in alternation with a choir or a soloist. But this time, since your congregation is familiar with the setting at LSB 498, you can have them start singing that right away on stanza one. You don't need a choir or a soloist to sing stanza one as a means of teaching it to the people, so you're going to have them jump right in and sing all the odd-numbered stanzas, one, three, five, and seven. However, to provide some variety and some interest throughout the hymn, consider this time having your choir or soloist sing stanzas two, four, and six, the even-numbered stanzas, um, and do so using the setting at LSB 499, the chant setting. Um, you'll notice in the Pew edition of the hymnal, just the melody is listed at LSB 499. For a, an optional, optional harmonic part, you can take a look at the, uh, the LSB hymn accompaniment volume. Um, this is what the organist or the pianist will play out of every week. There is a harmony listed there that you can use with your choir. Um, but also, I would strongly suggest chant is typically sung a cappella in unison. So there's really no problem with also having your choir sing that without any accompaniment underneath them, and that's very effective too. Um, another idea on how to accompany your choir as they sing those even-numbered stanzas of hymn 499 would be to utilize a simple handbell part with your singers. Simply break up each phrase of the hymn with a handbell chord. And you can see on the screen, I've put up an example of how you might do this for you. This provides a harmonic basis for your choir to sing with and keeps the rhythm of the chant moving. You can see here that the bells simply serve to mark each phrase of the hymn and provide a different sound, a harmony, under which the choir can sing the stanza. Um, for those of you who would be interested in using a setting like this, it, it should be made available to you on the resource page of our website. So you can check it there and uh, freely use it in your congregations. Um, another fun fact about this hymn, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed, is that it's listed as a possible hymn to be sung both on the day of Pentecost as well as the following Sunday, Holy Trinity Sunday. This means that you can use the hymn two weeks in a row. Um, and teaching is always most effective when you have some repetition involved. So especially if this is a new hymn for your people, consider planning it for both those Sundays right in a row so that they can learn it on Pentecost Sunday and then have another opportunity to practice it on Holy Trinity. And there's nothing wrong with having your choir help out both Sundays in the exact same way. Again, think about how you, you teach your children uh, to sing or to speak or to read. You do it by a lot of repetition and by revisiting that material. It's the same as you're teaching things to your congregation. Um, so having that opportunity to repeat is great to facilitate the learning process. For a detailed list of hymn suggestions for each Sunday in the church year, I'd really strongly represent, or uh, <laughs> represent, I would strongly recommend this resource, the LSB Hymn Selection Guide, published by Concordia Publishing House. Um, they have hymn suggestions for every Sunday in the church year, as well as hymns based on the various readings that would come up. So whether you're looking for something that's more generic to fit the themes of each given Sunday, or you're looking for something really specifically tied to one um, scripture reading, you can find it in that resource. As always, periodically check back on our seminary's resource page. Um, there's always fun, kind of free things there that you can make use of in your congregations. 
Um, as I mentioned a minute ago, that handbell setting of Come Holy Ghost Creator Blessed with the Choir will be available there. Um, we're also going to be putting up a few more psalm antiphons, as well as an intro at antiphon for Holy Trinity Sunday. Um, if you're not quite sure how to make use of these antiphons, I would strongly suggest that you go back in the archives and view Cantor Kevin Hildebrand's podcast from December of 2017, where he goes into um, psalms and antiphons and how to utilize that with psalm tones in great detail. All of your questions will be answered, probably even some questions that you didn't know you had. Uh, with that said, uh, blessings to all of you as you continue to plan for and lead the church's song in your parishes. Um, have a blessed Eastertide and a good Pentecost. God be with you. Thank you.